Hi, this is Jana Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to sharpen your images using an action. Now, if I sound a little funny, it's because I've got some allergies. Any of you with allergies know what I'm going through, so hopefully you can understand how I'm, what I'm uh, saying, and I'm not sniffling too much. So here we go. Before we start, I always like to show everybody my uh, site where I throw these videos on. So if you go to SullivanJPhotography.com and go to the blog section and this tips and lessons area, check out that so you can see all the videos and my articles that I've written on photography. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the action. Right here in front of you, this is a Joshua tree. If any of you uh, ever come out to Southern California, I highly recommend you going to Joshua Tree National Park. It's an amazing park. Um, it's perfect to go to in uh, the winter. You get some great cloud, cloud coverage like this up here. And then in the spring, there's some beautiful, uh, you can get some great shots of uh, a beautiful uh, desert flowers. And it's amazing what the desert can do. Uh, People think it's just ugly, but it's not. It's a beautiful place to uh, hike. So, uh, anyways, right here behind Joshua, this, I'm at the top. This is this Palm Springs area, and this is the San Andreas Fault. It's really cool. You get up to the top, there's a little sign up there. It tells you, like, all the locations. To the left is Salt and Sea. It's a lot of fun. And this is actually smog in here. <laughs> Welcome to Southern California. It's really hard to get rid of smog, uh, at least uh, when you have, if it's a windy day, then that's perfect because you don't have any smog, but then it's hard to photograph, so uh, catch 22 there. Okay, so let's get going. Uh, right here to the right, this area is your uh, action tab or to, uh, pane. So here is where we have a file that I've made and uh, to make an action but uh, it just say if this guy is not open go to the window section and then click on actions right here and it'll open it up for you so I don't like to uh, add my actions to the default area I actually once I start playing with my actions I go to over here and I save it um, I'll save the action well, it's not clicked, but if I highlight it, well, let's just do it because that's what I'm here for, right? So say I have a whole bunch of actions in here. You just go on to here, and then you go to Save to Your Actions, and then you just save it to where you want. I don't like to put it in the ap Applications file. Sometimes uh, my um, d actions and my plugins are within the application file area but not in the application. I hope that makes sense. So here is my plugin that I keep and then my actions are up in here. This way if I I haven't done that yet I need to transfer everything over but if I get rid of all my CS5s um, since I have the CS6 now I'm not going to get rid of any of my actions or plugins. And uh, to load them you just go to load actions, the, the ones that you've saved previously, and it'll throw it onto CS6. If you have any questions, just drop me an email, go to the website, and go to contacts, and I'll show you, I'll give you the steps on how to do that. But it's pretty easy. Uh, so, what we're going to do, you can make it, say, if you're starting a whole new file of different sharpening actions, you can go on here and click here, or you can go on here and do a new action set and then name it and all that stuff. But we're actually going to do an action and you can go back up here and go to new action but I, I actually like to use this pane down here. It makes it easy for you. That's why they do it. It's perfect. You just click on that guy right there and you name your action. So we'll just do sharpen and um, you name it whatever you want to name it so you remember what you're doing. Um, I have uh, I'm going to do this with a high pass. We'll just do high pass. Okay. And it is in the sharpen set, not the default. Okay. You can make, if you do these actions really quick, or all the time actually, you can make a, you know, you could put it into like a function key, F1. If you do, say you want to click shift F1 
uh, you can go ahead and do that because then you, then you don't have to come over here and click on all that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you something real quick. Over here, the button mode, this is all the different buttons that, you know, that are actions. So uh, for video purposes, obviously I'm going to go to the other way, but if you do something quick and you just want to click on that, it'll run your new action. But uh, I don't want you to see that. I want you to see like the steps that we do. See, if you go to default, each one of them has its own action that it's done for you, which is really cool. Play with those. Okay, I'm going to highlight that. So let's go ahead. Let's do the action. I don't want to do set. <laughs> let's go to the action. There we go. It's real sharpen. And I'll say high pass again. I just want to show you that because when you come over here and you color code, you can throw those on and then when you go to the button, you'll know the codes if you have a certain, uh, say you want all your sharpening uh, actions green, then make them all green. You'll kind of, it, it's just another way to organize your actions. Okay, once you get what the name, you click on record. Over here to the right, you can see the red button is, it's on. So every step that we do, it's going to record our steps for this action, which is perfect because if you're doing continual steps that are just constant, why not do an action? It's so easy, you're going to say to yourself, why didn't I do this years ago if you haven't already? Okay, so to, in order to do our new sharpening action, you're going to go down and you're going to go to, or up, and you're going to go to layer, and you're going to go to duplicate layer. And it's not, it's going to be a sharpen. Sharpen, sharpening. How about if I do a sharpening? And then I'll, so I've named it. Okay. Next, you're going to come over here to the right. And you're going to click on this guy. And you're going to go to insert menu item. Don't touch anything yet. Because you're going to go up here to filter. You go to other, and you're going to click on high pass. Now you're going to go ahead and click OK. And you've actually just completed the action. So you want to stop it recording. You click on this, and now you have your new action. This is your new action that we just did. Now let's pretend that we just opened this image. It's the size that I need to throw it on my website, but I want some areas sharpened, I want some areas not. So let's go ahead and play with that. Pretend this guy is closed. We just got in. We're going to go here. We're going to click on this because we're going to use this action. And to run the action, you're going to push play. Okay. So right now, as you can see, uh, I want you to pay attention to these things because this area where it's like starting to do a little halo effect because if you start going over the top uh, and you start like especially if you start seeing your image through the high pass that's way too much sharpening it's gonna look it's I think it looks horrible and you don't want the halo effects so bring it down to uh, where you for sure will not have any halo effects in your image now if you want a certain area sharpened I'll show you how to do that uh, just for now just get to where you think that you know uh, you want the effect sharpened but you don't want any halos here and it, it say if we want this guy sharpened a little bit more I'll show you how to do that okay once you see what you once you got what you like go ahead and go to OK and uh, then what I do instantly because the reason why we do these actions is so we can have a mask to really get into detail with the sharpening effect and then I'm gonna go to soft light is what I usually use but for videos let me just show you the difference for the hard light so you can kind of see what's going on here so here's before and here's after now see how crazy that is that's that to me that's way too much sharpening but just for video purposes I want you to see of course if you think that you've gone a little crazy Go to the opacity and then bring it down if you want. You can you can help you know reduce the sharpening effect there. Soft light is what I like to use personally, and you can still see 
even with, oh, I still got on hard light. Hold on, let's go back to soft. Soft light. So here it is. That's a, to me, that's a little bit better. Okay. But I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, you know, it's a little too much. But I really, for, some, for me, I kind of want my sky having no sharpening effect at all. Or, you know what, let's do something different. Let's make that Joshua tree not as sharpened, okay? Everything else will keep sharpened. So you're going to make sure you're on the layer. And you're, so it's clicked on there, the panes are around it. You're going to go to this section right here. And you're going to make sure the black is on the top. You're going to go to your paintbrush, okay? And then you're going to paint over what you don't want sharpened. So you're going to put a mask over it. So you're going to go in here and you're going to get rid of all that sharpening effect. Okay. And what I like to do is go to my channel section because I know what I'm focusing on. And then I'll just go ahead. Oops, I got it on the white. See if the white reduces, that gets removes the mask so then the sharpening effect will come through, right? So I want to make sure that this is masked off and I would get into detail, but because of video, uh, let's not do that. And well, let's go here. So I really get into detail with this stuff. It's great using the channels because then I kind of know what's going on. Okay. But anyways, let's just get back. Otherwise, I'll be here all day. <laughs> Okay, so here is my before and after. Let's go actually to the hard light so you can really see the difference. So now you can see that um, most of the Joshua tree is not sh has not been sharpened. Okay, now say if there's an effect that I really want sharpened more than the this uh, area right in here. Say I want let's see what what can I sharpen that you could really tell. We're going to sharpen this little guy in here, but um, I want it more than what I ran previously in this action. So go down to the bottom, okay, here, add another layer, and up here, you're going to click on this, but you're going to hold the Alt and Option key at first. Hold it down, then click, and you're going to click on merge visible and just like it's stated it's merging everything that you've done okay it's taken the information down in here and it's up here so now you can run your action again by taking that information otherwise um, what it does you can run it um, without doing this but uh, it's just gonna it's just gonna copy this information I don't want that so I ran it again, and now I'm only paying attention to this little baby Joshua tree right here, and I don't care if anything else is going out of the top because we're going to mask that out. So here's my little baby Joshua tree. This is kind of would be way too crazy, but I, I'm liking that, and so I'm going to push OK. And then, like I say, I go down to the bottom, add a mask because that's what this thing's all about. But instead of leaving it white, I'm going to instantly go to Command Apple I to invert the mask. And now none of the sharpening effect is um, on the image. And I'm going to paint the sharpening that I just ran onto the baby Joshua tree. So I'm going to put white now instead of black. It's already on my paintbrush tool because I used it. And then I'm, oh, <laughs> hey, I'm glad I did that. So Command Z gets rid of your mistakes, and um, what I want to do is I'm going to go to Hard Soft Light, and I make sure that guy's done, and then now I'm going to paint this. Okay, don't leave it on normal, and then go to your mask or your channels. I'm sorry and then look at what you've done. Okay, so this guy's going to be nice and sharpened. Okay, let's go to layers. Okay, so now let's do the before and after. Oh, you know what, I'll do it hard so you can see it. So here's the before and here's the after. See, at the after. So see what a difference? I mean, that's just the one location. Of course, that's a little crazy and I would not do that, but say if you needed that 
area sharpen more than say this area because you don't want the halo going here so you don't want to go crazy in the very beginning you're just going to punch it up a little later so um, truthfully what I do um, everybody likes to keep all their layers but all this layer has done is given you the information to make the new action once you've done the new action you've got the information it's no big deal dump it in the trash because now which say if you want to go into this area right in here this layer and you want to change this up a bit then you can go ahead and make sure it's in the um, you know in the mass mode and say you want to uh, you decide you know what I don't want any of my sky to have uh, any of the sharpening effects so you're gonna go back over here and you paint this and get rid of the sharpening effect here okay Always go to channels just to show you. So basically, let's make sure it's in the dark. I don't want anything done here. Okay? I know it's messy, sorry, but this is just for video. <laughs> so now you can see that the only place that's sharpened is down below, and which is really extreme. I probably would I would definitely fix that, but you got I just want you to see it. If you go to soft light, it's probably better. Yeah, there's still, but you just can't see it as good in the video. And then say if up here you're like, you know what? I like this guy sharpened, but you know what? I want this little rock sharpened too. That would be pretty cool. Go to your mask, and you're going to go to the white because you want to open up the new sharpening actions that we just did. And you're going to paint. Whoa, look at how crazy that is. But it's, at least it's telling you, uh, at least I'm showing you what it can do and just try not to go over sharpen. I don't like that. I mean, I guess if that's your thing, go for it. But for me, I don't want it too sharpened. But see, you can see what it's doing. It's changing it up. So this is unlimited. I mean, you could just keep going and going. It's great. I hope you enjoyed it. This is pretty much done. Once I'm completed all this, um, you could throw it up on the website, throw it as a JPEG, and there you go. So if you have any questions, definitely go to my website like I showed you before. You can go to the contact tab and throw me an email, and I will email you back. Or I do post this on the blog, so you can always comment on the blog and ask questions so everybody else can read up on them. Because I'm sure, if, like when I was in college, if you have a question, other people have questions they just don't want to ask. <laughs> so anyways, I hope this helps you. It's a great tool to sharpen your images quickly with an action. Okay, have a great day. Cheers.